Welcome to John Boy and Jake Radio. Today is November 25th, Wednesday afternoon. I'm coming to you live from the John Boy Media headquarters. And Jake is coming live from Tikake, South Kakalaka. How is it there, Jake? And, and producer Bug Bug's in the corner. James, Buggy. Uh, it's, it's all right. right. I mean, it, it's, it's chilly, chilly, you know, you know it, down, down in South, South Carolina, Carolina, there's a chance you get some nice weather. The first day we came down, it was like mid sixties, nice, we're outside, the doggos are running around. It was, uh, yesterday was like 40, 45, so we, we were getting the, the Thanksgiving chill, and we're doing all right, man. We've got three dogs here, uh, Chloe, uh, the eldest, 12 years old, uh, little black dog, miserable. Uh, mm. noodle, noodle three and a half years old the biggest dog, dog to ever live um having a jolly time just anywhere he goes and then we just added a puppy to the mix yesterday uh what's, what's the puppy's name oh god george in trouble for that what's that george is it, is it george? george i don't know i don't know so. final answer oh george sounds exactly right to me okay so george George, George the puppy, puppy uh, yeah, yeah, just just, just a mix, mix. Young, young, going going nuts, terrorizing noodle, noodle again. again. Old dog is miserable. Like, like we gathered around, gathered, gathered around the fire last night, night and we had the dogs there, there and lit- old dog literally left like the circle of people and just stared into the dark of the night. So, so like, old dog's dog having some dark thoughts. thoughts lived there, but uh, doing, doing generally well. well. Doing generally well. Building up for Turkey Day. Um, and, and yeah, wearing, wearing wearing a plaid shirt, shirt that's, that's everything. Jim. It's all the news. Are the is the audio better yet, BBD? I think so. People complaining? Yes. Oh, have you not seen? Oh, uh, I know what the issue would be. Okay. Did, Did you, you smoke out Jimmy's, Jimmy's ears, ears, BBD? I know you were worried about that. Oh, I thought for sure it should be fixed for Jake now. That's okay. on me. Uh, um, Jake, no one heard anything you said. That's fine. No, they that's did. They just heard it twice. It was echoing. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. So, yeah. Cool. Uh, you look nice. Now, did you just pack that shirt? What's the question? Like, if I'm packing for th- if I'm packing for Thanksgiving, I'm bringing one of those shirts for Thanksgiving Day. I'm worried that you wearing your nice shirt. Today, tomorrow's Thanksgiving. Do you have a second nice shirt? Oh, absolutely not. So that's uh, that's Jess's biggest concern. So I threw this on because again, we, things got chilly last night. So I used this as an overshirt. I left. I brought a bunch of hoodies and jackets because we rented a car, so it's like unlimited space. You don't feel trapped to the suitcase. Um, but I never actually moved all the sweat sweatshirts and hoodies and jackets from the car to the house. So, I only use the suitcase because, again, the human idiot thing kicked in. Um, so, yeah, I think, you know, Jess's mom, excited. Jake dressed like a human today. Jess, probably back of her head, oh, no. Um, I do have a little ditty drawn up for Thanksgiving. I brought the monogram turtleneck, um, and I, I brought out my red puffy Marty McFly vest. So, I'm, I'm just leaning into, like... I have nothing. Mm, okay. I have something, yeah. a development for you. That's good. I like hearing about your packing. It's always a Thank mess. You. It's the same story every time. You just throw things yes. into a suitcase. I think uh, this new setup we have, where when I look at the screen and the and the cameras right in front of me, I was watching back the Odo or Kratzy. I got like a Mike Ford thing going on because I'm like looking up. Yeah, the head. And my yeah. head, I had, so I think I might have to go like backwards hat. I think you had it going straight sideways. I think you had it going directly to your right. I'm just trying to fix it, you know? Be the best I can be. You see my new laptop? It's fucking huge. Huge laptop. How's, how's she purring? You still in a, a new lover stage with the new laptop? Yeah, I had to set up all the drops again, yeah. which we just did. And then I found out on the the program I use, the sample, it says like you can put a bunch of drops in a row and it gives me a sample 
and it has all the car drops in like a story. Like it says, our intrepid driver enters the vehicle, starts the car. Suddenly, a figure darts in the road. The figure screams. Our driver's like, I don't know how to play this. Look, let's let's see if we can hear. I currently have no idea what you're talking about. It's telling us a story. So, like, the program built that with five different sounds. And, like, this is something you can do. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Which just opens my eyes to a new, something new I can do. Yeah. The only version we have of that is this. Barbaric. Hmm. Let that word resound. Which is two drops that I always play back to back. A classic. Classic. An all-timer. Yeah. Have you decided on the dumpling situation yet are you going dumplings uh no i i uh i have not someone on twitter just said are we live in 15 i'm gonna say live now went early because i gotta get on the road for thanksgiving i'm gonna make those brussels sprouts things yes the dumplings like the version i make are good tasting but super sloppy Mm. Like looking like you don't take a picture of them and be like, look how impressive this is not posting them to the gram and yeah, know, eating dumplings with these pig shits. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good skit. That was the first skit that actually made me laugh watching that show. So uh, it, it like left it left the show for a little bit. It went to social media and Instagram and yeah, we uh, That's the first one. That's a hit. Yeah. Watched it a little bit last night. First uh, Jess's uh, sister hadn't seen it, so she was laughing pretty good. Um, I think you should leave for those who don't know. Does she look just like Jess? Do they look alike? They do not. Uh, different father and mother. So yeah, that would that that adds up. <laughs> yeah, I don't look anything like you. No, <laughs> similar situation. Different father and mother. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man oh anything else we got going on i have a trivia for you we we got sent a new halftime thing but we'll wait till you're back you're gonna absolutely hate it i don't know if bbd told you already i didn't okay you're gonna not be ha you're not gonna be happy if this is the first of many of its ilk okay well B Biebers, do you have the thing i gave you uh last time we talked jjr i do do you want to I mean, watch Jimmy Jim did wanna, halftime? If you and Jim really want to, like, I won't stop you guys. I'm cleansing, by the way, but not anymore because yeah. I broke it this morning. Okay. I, I, this is probably on your cleanse. I did two days. Apple for breakfast, smoothie for lunch, spinach and chicken salad for dinner. Two days. So I was supposed to do today. But we ran out of, like, the good smoothies, and we only have the gross smoothies that, like, for when we really cleanse, and they're still frozen. So I had my apple this morning, and then I was like, I'm pretty hungry. And then I went into the little bodega to get, see if they have a smoothie, and I was like, well, this, is, I can't do that. If you're cleansing, it's like a don't even walk into the bodega situation. Right. But I felt so gross, and we're going back to my parents for Thanksgiving, and we're going to eat like shit. Like, we ate... So gross. Like, we had bagels for like five days in a row. Like, Katie and I were counting the yeah. amount of bagels we ate in a three day span. We're like, oh my God, that's gross. Then we did a pizza blind taste test with my parents, all the pizzerias in Lavalette, because there's like five to like, figure out which one do we actually like the most. Controversial. Um, So we just like, I, I can't, like, I need to take a break. So I'm happy I did it, but I broke it today. Uh, but then I think after Thanksgiving until Christmas, like that three weeks span, I think we're trying to like for real, like we have these gross veggie smoothies, two for breakfast, two for lunch, two for dinner type shit. It's pretty good. My, uh, my body's a disaster right now. Uh, um, going from COVID with the back injury. Cause I mean, I always ate pretty disgusting, but I, I'm a pretty good workout guy. Like I would, I, I would get my routine and even if it was, you know, uh, I would I would get a lift in, mm -hmm. you know, a, a lot of days. And, dude, so, you know, I was going through the timeline because we were looking at some Black Friday stuff, Shop John Boy Media ad, 
Um, and so around this time, I think it was last year in BBers, maybe BBers. See, maybe see if you can bring it on the screen, Jim. I don't know if you remember this. I did a uh, Francisco Cervelli had a weird video working out in his yard, crawling around on the grass. Yes, as and if I, I don't remember that. I mean, that's yeah. Oh well, okay. I have redirected yes. porn.com to take me to that yeah. Instagram post of Cervelli. That's on me. Yeah. That's on me. But Beavers, I think if you look up Talking Jake Cervelli, so I recreated the video. And dude, like my arms are roped up. And it's the classic case of if you asked me then, I would have been like, yeah, I'm kind of, you know, I'm a little chunky right now. I could use, lose some water weight. I look at myself a year ago and I'm like, oh my God, hot boy Jake. So uh, I think my game plan as of now is I'm going to go, I'm going to start working out actively between Christmas and uh thanksgiving and christmas but i'm not going to turn the diet knob up and okay. then once new year's happens then i'll go work out and diet and try to hit it because yeah i uh i gotta I, I gotta get in shape for next baseball season yeah a lot of stadium tours i just found the video i wish i could share my screen with you uh bbd somehow but you type talking jake cervelli but i i i posted cervelli's video and yeah. i said fucking cervelli i love this dude crawling around like an insect man in the name of defensive catching, which made myself yes. laugh right there because that's what he was doing. Yes. And then I said, Talking Jake, recreate this immediately. And then you recreated it. And, yeah, you look better there. Oh, a lot better. And, I mean, when I get close to the camera, I mean, the arms are popping. Um, and right now I've just I've got nothing. I'm just yeah. rotund, and it's not a good look for me. Well, I'm not doing the workout stuff, but I'm going to try and eat better, and then I'm going to try and get a treadmill and do something. Here we go. We're on the screen now. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, I'm just a sexual creature in that video. Like, where is this Denver? I have no idea. I think we were traveling somewhere. But holy smokes, I mean, just hot and athletic. And I'm not giving out those vibes anymore. Like, I look like a professional baseball player. There is what I'm assuming people are commenting right now. Give or take. Uh, five inches, 20 pounds, and a lot of athletic ability. You're close. What about that crab shot where my it's kind of my dick in the camera? A lot of people freeze frame that. Yeah. So, and that's... Someone's in the body. chat. Someone in, this, in the chat just like, I think it's the same guy. Don't get a treadmill, Jimmy. Treadmills are bad. And I think he also said smoothies are bad. Yeah. Love advice, crew. I only get treadmill because bikes and what's the other one? What's the fucking stupid one? Elliptical. Oh, ellipticals can go fuck themselves straight yeah. in the face. If I wanted to ride an elliptical, I would just like go in a pool and flail about like an idiot. I do not have a rhythm to do an elliptical. I hate it. I do a treadmill. I like a treadmill. Yeah, I don't think ellipticals are really built for short guys. I think that's a deep, dark secret. Is that it? I feel, like when I'm on elliptical, I feel like I'm on a torture device. Yeah, it's also, I think it's it's something that takes practice. Like, I think you need to find the rhythm and find the technique that works for you. Yeah. Because, um, yeah, I mean, I've probably given the elliptical a hack twice and been like, oh, oh, no. I don't think I've spent over two minutes lifetime using an elliptical i've tried on multiple sessions and i'm like this sucks i don't yeah nothing seems to be working and the big thing is with bikes i don't feel like it does anything for my belly and that's the only thing i care about i want my belly and my face to lose weight i don't care if my legs are in shape or toned you do the bike a lot of it's just your legs yeah i mean i don't know the rules i don't know the rules on cardio and stuff i mean i i uh we are team Peloton now, and that's going to be part of my life. Like I, you've heard me say, I think I'm going to be can't leave the house until I Peloton. Or at least I'll give myself some Jake leeway, like five out of seven days. Well, but I want I, well, I, I lost a lot of weight summer of 2017 when I started talking Yanks yeah. because I did a cleanse, smoothies, and I did the treadmill a lot. Like every yeah. day I would do an hour on the treadmill. It was the skinniest I've been past 15 years of my life, I think. Walking is like one of the deep secrets. Like if you just walk a lot, you'll get in shape. Oh, I mean, that's what I do on the treadmill. 
I walk like three laps. I sprint one. Right. It's the old hockey workout. You're, you're on for one shift, then you're off, and it's 40 seconds at a time. That's how my body was built. Sure. I do like two miles. That's all I do. Weight just need to break fun. a sweat. Yeah, I need to do that, yeah. but, but I got to get a treadmill first. And then I got to actually use it. There's so many. I, right. I talk myself into what I'm going to do with my morning before I go to work. And I fill it up right. with like, I'm going to write a chapter of a book. I'm going to go on the treadmill. And then all I do is play with Mac. Yeah. Oh, dogs. Yeah. Dogs are tough, man. Mac's cute Love as hell. Him. He doesn't jump in, on me to wake me up anymore, but he wants to go play at like 630. And he's bumping it to 620 now. And I want to be like, dude, you like 630, fine line. You can't bump it earlier yeah. than 630, Mac. What the fuck? But today he just wanted to play. So I did run. So I've been running in the morning because I run around the backyard. He chases me. Huge. It's tiring. Today, I'm, I'm usually faster than him. And I can, like, outmaneuver him because as soon as he jumps up, I just pivot away from the jump, you know? Right. He can't move once he's in mid-jump. And um, so usually I can dip and dodge him. I feel like I'm, like, you know, Jaquiz Rogers in the backfield just, like, sidestepping mm. him, like, nonstop. And then this morning I had nothing. He was yeah. all over me, like, biting my elbows, biting my shins. Like, I just couldn't dodge him. I was like, fuck, man. I think it's the 10 minutes earlier thing. He's learning your moves. Um, a, I think our sports fans are stoked that you dropped Jacquez Ros- Rogers. Um, yeah, you know they not probably a lot of them are not familiar how big of a Jacquez Rogers fan you are. Oregon State. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. What Jacquiz was his brother's and, name? What was his brother's name? Yeah, I think I, it was yeah. uh, Jacquez. Was it Were they similar names? Was it Jacquez and Jacquez? It's something along the way. <laughs> it wasn't Jacquees and Jack. They were similar, though. Jazz yes. and Jacquees or something like that. Something like that. Wikipedia's telling me his older brother's name is James. I don't think he went by James. Probably he not. might have, actually. That might have been part of the joke. <clears throat> like, okay, James and your Jacquees. Dancing in the backfield. Dancing on the toilet. Um... Yeah, so that's been my mornings. But, yeah, I'm going to get a treadmill. Huge. And I'm going to work out. How about that? Stoked. And I'm going to write a chapter of the book while on the treadmill. Write or read? Write. Whoa. Just going to dictate it to to speak to text? That would be great. There's going to be all You're these, like, screaming. read the book, and it's, like, heavy breathing. Screaming on the treadmill. Whispering under his breath now. Oh, I've got a hilarious one. So we're, you know, we're making the drive to North Kakalak. It's about 10 hours. And, uh, you know, Jess and I have been on a few road trips at this point. And, you know, we we listen to different podcasts and things. Uh, so what would we do? Oh, so we listened to the... We've got one lock. And we start the trip with that. What is it? It's um, Renee something. She she has Renee Brown, I think. She's she's popular. She does some psychological stuff. She had a Ted Lasso podcast um, that had Sudeikis and Coach Beard on. Mm-hmm. Uh, and it was cool. I mean, they're you know they're getting a little too heavy at times. I mean, they're talking about you know the sociological impact of Ted Lasso, and it's like, well, it's you know a good show. Um, but it was good. And, you know, we've been enjoying Ted Lasso. I've been telling you it's the best show on television, mm. uh, begging you and Katie to watch. We're going to start. So, you know, we enjoy that. I think it was an hour, hour and a half kickoff. Sure. So Jess goes, um, I have the, the Barack Obama book on tape. Like, can we throw that on? And I'm like, Hunter's reading it right now. Here's the deal. Like, I'm, I'm sure it's delightful and it's informative. And I, you know, I, I like Barry. Um, so it's like, you know, here, here's my thing though. Usually when Jess has her preference, what happened last time is, uh, Jonathan Van Ness, JVN mm-hmm. had Queer his eye. book on tape. Queer eye. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and we throw it on and d- don't get me wrong. I'm a, I'm a big JVN fan, Juven. uh, but Jess puts it on and fell asleep instantly. Not so then it's, it's me driving through the middle of America 
listening to JVN and like all of his sexcapades. And, you know, don't get me wrong, interested, but kind of not what I'd be tuning into. So it just was like, no, let's let's throw it on. It'll be good. I was like, yeah, sure. Puts it on. The book on tape is 29 hours long. Yeah, the book is too long because uh, uh, Ritzy's boyfriend Hunter's reading it. And I'm like interested in it, but there's no that's way too long. I can't. Uh, my limit's 300 pages, like 350. I'll go to 700 yeah. pages. What are you doing? It's too long of a book. Write three books. Triple your money. Like, all right, use your brain. Yeah. So we we listened for a little bit, but it was also, then it hit the point, I, li- I could listen to Barry O talk about anything. So, I mean, that part was fun. But, yeah, I mean, we listened to a chunk of it, and then she fell asleep. I got to listen to some sports. But, yeah, I mean, just dropping, you know, we're, it's like a nine-and-a-half-hour drive. The, the numbers don't make sense there. So I was a little disappointed in that, and I'm glad it's off my chest now. I'm glad it's off your chest, too. Yeah. Putting on a podcast and falling asleep is a hell of a move. I mean, it's it, the JVN stuff. It was out of a comedy movie. I, I'm pretty good. I'm pretty, if I'm driving, we'll do whatever the car wants because no one wants to listen to the stuff I want to listen to. Right. But as soon as the car is asleep and it's just me, I'm very quick to change to my audio. Well, the problem is I, A, suck with technology, and B, all these car hookup things now hook up to your text messages and not in not in the flex way at all you've seen my text messages it's a disaster yeah so uh it's it's nightmarish to hook up to any of those machines so normally it's her phone hooked up with the directions so i'm just kind of in a level of purgatory where it's like all right chap couldn't you just make couldn't you just turn the side of your phone off so it doesn't make noise yes but it's it's honestly distracting because it pops up on the screen. So you have the Apple Play stuff. Um, like it, yeah. it says, like, a new text came Dude, in. Dude, I got my new laptop, and it started doing my text messages, like, on the screen. And I, ha- I, I hate iCloud. My phone's yeah. my phone. My laptop's my laptop. Quit fucking doing shit every- everywhere. And because I, I record my screen so much that when those notifications pop up in the middle of recording a snag it or recording a you know, a video for something like I, I'll want to fight my computer screen. So I have like, I had to immediately disconnect from iCloud and all that stuff. I forgot how much I hate it. Disagree. Yeah. I love having, being able to do the text. You got to turn the notifications off and stuff so yeah. it doesn't pop up and make noise. But, but you're a big windows guy in general. You have like two tabs of 20 windows. Oh times. yeah. I have way too many tabs, I but I do, but I like having the text here since April. I like have not been able to reconnect these things. And I meant to go to the Apple store and get that fixed over, Vacation week didn't like you have the Slack app, yeah, which I don't even have. I just go to Slack.com and find it out there. I keep Slack a very app. clean. Just on my phone. Very, or, no, you have it on that. Computer. I have it on the computer. Yeah, too. I keep a very clean desktop. Folders don't muddy it up, so all those notifications piss me off. I'm a disaster. You just let whatever happen happen. It's out of my control. I trust the programs. And I shouldn't. Yeah. Um, like, honestly, that's that's what tapped me out of, uh, oh, I mean, the most important note of, the, note of this morning, when I used to be a big Rocket League player. Mm-hmm. Um, Getting all your frustration out? Yes. I. Uh, so I just, you know, I picked up the game and I started playing. And so, like, I, I don't know, like a year and a half into playing Rocket League, I forget, I think we were on like a ski trip or something and someone had had brought a system, cool guys alert, and, uh, oh, it was my system, I'm the cool guy. So, set up the Xbox, because yeah, we were in Denver somewhere, the mountains, and I turned it on and, you know, turned the game on and they were like, how do you play like this? And I was like, what do you mean? Like, this, these are the settings. And they're like, no, dude, you gotta change, like, everyone who plays this game knows you have to go to this setting and change the camera angle and you have to change the, you know, the camera frequency or whatever. I was like, what? shouldn't the game know that? Like I, and that's how I just live my life. Yeah. You're autopilot for anything. Autopilot for literally everything. Yeah. My, my thing is, I, <laughs> this, uh, I'm such a, I'm such a dipshit. 
asshole. Um, I don't want my phone to get my attention ever. My phone doesn't vibrate. It doesn't ring. I have no banner ads. I have no notifications. I have nothing. I never want to be doing something, and then my phone gets my attention. I give my phone attention right. when it needs attention. So that's why Katie will sometimes be some mad. people. Yeah, some people say the point of the cell phone is to get your attention yeah. when needed. Nope, my phone. If my phone was sitting here and the screen was black, I could be getting a thousand calls, thousand texts, thousand anything, and I would never know because I pick it up so often that I usually don't miss anything. Right. But then, like when we're recording, I'll 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 get a million things. But that's my thing. Sure. Katie likes Siri, and she's talking to Amazon or whatever fuck her name is. Like, mm, all Alexa. the time now. Alexa. Like, Alexa lives in my house now. It's crazy. Yeah. I don't like it, but I don't really care. Oh, yeah. But Katie's like, she, like, blasted me because Alexa was set to volume 10. I was laying in bed reading. Alexa, what's the weather tomorrow? Oh, I was like, holy <laughs> shit. Like, this isn't a part of the bedroom. Yeah. Alexa just screaming at me. Yeah, I always, I always forget we have one. Katie and has I, one in every room. Our house has three uh, dots. No. You're bugged. Alexa's just everywhere. Alexa owns you. I don't ever talk to her. All I say is, Alexa, t- shut up. Alexa hears you making love. I shit talk Alexa a lot, and Katie like doesn't like it. Alexa's going to like leak a sex tape on you. Imagine if they dropped all every time everyone shit talks Alexa. Like Amazon just had that audio. Be good marketing. Yeah. Like, Katie will be like, Alexa, what's the weather? And then as she's answering, I'll be like, Alexa, go fuck yourself. And that's, like, what makes me laugh. Right. And just nonstop right. shit-talking Alexa as it's answering Katie. Have you tried shit-talking Mac yet? Alexa, don't care. Yeah. That, that's said a lot. <laughs> um, uh, have I shit-talked Matt? Yeah, Mac, yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah, that's always fun. Right. Primal. Dog company sent me some more stuff, so I have stuff for Noodle, unless Cash gets it all before I see you. Like a, it. like a pig snout. I saw it. Dude, isn't that weird? A society's weird. Yeah. Like, I saw Mac nibbling on that pig snout, and, you know, you're like, oh, man, that dog is really into that toy. And then you're like, that toy is a dead pig's nose. Yeah, yeah. The cow's ear was weird, but they love it, man. Love it. That Disgusting. company sent it to us. They said, if you ever do a breakdown of Mac again, let us know. And I I am, I am, have one of Mac and Noodle that I'm going to do, and I'm right. probably going to take another video of Mac and Cash. I checked out the views. It got pretty good views. Yeah. People love dogs. So I'm going to reach out to them. I am doing one. Jess is a beautifully sane person, but if a dog gets involved, she's a looney tune. She's yeah. a full-gone nut job. I, uh, yeah, I don't know what their budget is because the breakdowns are kind of expensive, but we'll see. Not to, uh, not to seggy us too far into the sports, but did you see the, the big game is on tonight? I was going to say that UConn versus CCSU. Huge. Who are you we root- got some content from one of those games. I wonder if I get it. Who are you rooting for? If I get it, I'll live tweet it. Uh, rooting for the ball. Dude, I think that obvious. what's the what's the conference that CCSU is in? Uh, the NEC, Northeast N- NEC. I think they don't even have like a TV network. I think they have like a YouTube network. Yeah, I think that seems about right. Because if you have ESPN Plus, you get a lot of the conference network show. It's on FS1 tonight. Oh, so I can definitely find that. Yeah, UConn's UConn's a real team. CCSU not so much. Yeah, but is UConn good this year or are they bad again? They have a chance to be good. They joined the Big East again, which people are excited about. because remember they were that, in that yeah. te- They were in that terrible conference, the AAC. Um, so now they'll play real teams. Like, every time, like, if UConn got ranked and they lost one game, like, that would be it. Like, they were they were basically a, mid-conf- a mid-major. Like, UConn, uh, you know, four national titles in the past 20 years or whatever it is. Um Probably 25 now, something like that. But, um, yeah, excited. I mean, we did – what video did we do from there a few years back? We just went to a game. Yeah, but we recorded something. We set up a camera, like, well, beforehand. Uh, I mean, this is a 
we set up a camera at the bar thanking everyone that donated to our GoFundMe for Grown Losers. Look at that. Wow. We raised like 1500 I think. I made a friend in the men's bathroom that day. You did? We we yeah. had – there's a picture of us because we were wearing the same sweater and then some yep. other kid was wearing the same sweater and we like grabbed him – we were really drunk. We grabbed him for a picture and like didn't even let him know. And he was like, what the fuck is this? Yeah, that's tough. You never know how someone's going to respond to that. I think I still have like, like my phone still has stuff from that night. From that. Yeah. I, uh, yeah, I was peeing and, uh, I think, what did we go? The wild horse, the crazy horse somewhere in Hartford. Yeah. Um, it wasn't it wasn't Red Lady, right? No. It was next to there. No. And Poor House isn't there anymore. So I'm I'm using a stall in the bathroom and we're yucking it up. And uh the guy's like, Oh, you're a CCSU guy, you still live around here? And I had just I had just moved to Dallas or I was moving to Dallas. Um and he was like, Oh, you gotta talk to my buddy. He's moving down there. Uh, I was like, Okay. So then that guy introduced me, and I, I became friends with, with the guy from the men's stall, Chris. Chris with a K. You're nice still, guy. Still friends with him? Yeah. We're on we're on the gram and stuff. He DMs. He's excited for our baseball stuff. So. Oh, that's nice of him. I definitely have the footage from this somewhere. Because it was right after we filmed the first two episodes, and we raised a bunch of money. Or we raised that much money. Here it is. This guy. Oh, he looks he looks happy. I don't know if you can see this. Yeah. He's got like a little dicky vibe going on. We all had the same sweatshirt on, so we just grabbed him and said, take a picture. Did you see the Hartford Current listed you as a famous alumni? <laughs> Did they really? Oh, I saw well, that. Yeah. That looks like me having a good buzz going. Yeah. Um, that's funny for CCSU. Yeah. So it's NFL coaches, Mike Sherman, Dave Campo, GM, Scott Pioli, Colorado state football coach, Steve Adazio, former major league baseball player, Skip Jutsi. Didn't know that one. Evan Scribner, relief pitcher, Ricky Batalico, relief pitcher, uh, former NBA coach, Bob Zuffaletto. Didn't know him. Jimmy O'Brien, Twitter star known for his baseball videos, and Fox 61's Ashley Afonso. What a list. We should all go get dinner together. Who's Ashley? I think we went to school with Ashley Afonso. What's Skip's last name? Jutsi? Jutsi. How you spell uh, that? And I'm, I'm pretty mad because the guy who wrote the article, we did an interview with him, me and Katie Sharp, on Talking Huskies. Dom Amore, he's like a big UConn guy. So, I mean, me and him are... Shots fired. Fighting. How do you spell Jutsi? J-U-T-Z-E. Oh, my God. Skip Jutsi. He's got... Oh, my God. He is ugly. Oh, I love that. Dude, you're going to like him. Can you... He's like all that is man from the 70s. All that is man. Dude, you're going to like his vibe. He played for the Astros, big sideburns, smelled awful. You got to go Definitely look at Definitely smells. Do you see him? Are you looking? Oh, no, no, no. I was looking at Ashley Afonso. I recognize her. We went to college with her. Uh, Skip Jutsy? Yeah. Do you think we're pronouncing that right? Uh, Alfred. His name was Alfred. Henry. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. Do you love him, right? This guy's my father. <laughs> That's what I, dude, I mean, that guy is all that is man in the 70s. We need to link up with this guy soon. That dude went to after parties and did not shower after the game. He has never been to a regular party. He only goes to after, after parties. parties. Yeah, he goes pregame to after party, but he pregames pretty hard. Oh, my God. Beavers, have you seen this guy yet? Oh, yeah, I'm pulling him up. In a There's some better picks, too. Like, the two pictures they have on his baseball reference page, one looks like, one looks like, dude, his baseball reference page, the first picture looks like when your dad plays in, like, a father-son game, and you're like, this is going to suck. And the next one looks like 
uh, a mob man that was disguised as a baseball player to go kill someone. Like Sal Fasano vibes? Very into him. Man, I didn't know about him earlier. Three career home runs from 26 to 30. He played for the Cardinals and then four years for Houston. Never hit a home run. And then in 1977, he plays for Seattle and and hits three home runs. But he had three triples in 76. That dude had triples? Someone in the chat said he hit the first ever Mariners Grand Slam. Don't know if that's true. Okay. We can probably find that. Skip. I believe you. I mean, whoever said it in the chat. Skip. I mean, Jetsy. three triples in '76. People got hurt. Yeah. Career career OPS plus of 45. My man. It was a backup catcher. This guy is Central Connecticut State. Yeah. Mm hmm. The so in night. When did the Mariners become a team? I'm guessing 77. So maybe it was like expansion draft. That's why they took him, or that's why he got over there. <laughs> yeah, 77 was the first year. So then he hit the Grand Slam May 17th. So they didn't have to wait that long. Man. Baseball reference is one of the biggest wormholes ever. It runs my life some days. Because, um, yeah, I mean... The guy who was number two in war on the initial Seattle Mariners page has an incre- Enrique Romo. He has incredible picture. Um, he looks like he's in pain. He yeah. looks like a conquistador, and they photoshopped a, an old pirate's hat on his body. This guy, the sun was in his eyes. Oh, my God. Click to see the second picture of him, Jake. Click click baseball <laughs> reference to see the second picture of our, our dude Romo. Do you see it? <laughs> he looks he looks like a drawing. Oh nice. yo, that second photo. I wish I could share this or something. I don't know how. But you can open it in a new tab and then show the people if you if you figure it out. But I mean that second photo, that's not a real player. Enrique I mean, is- Rome. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> It it's, wasn't showing me the big. second picture for a while. You got to click it's, on it. Yeah, I mean, I he's, in he's a Mexican born and I, you know, I'm not, he, he looks like if you were reading a history book and there was like, you know, about Mexican history, like this guy would pop up and then, you know, someone put a pirate's uniform on him. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes. So and that's the sports news. Yeah. Well, we, we go to trivia. I got trivia for you. What trivia do you have today? Tri- play the trivia soundbite. Uh, yep, of course, uh, of course I will. The trivia soundbite is. It's time for trivia. Okay, trivia. Huge. Yeah, thanks. In the year 2020, mm. um, who had... You're never going to get this, so I'm trying... I'll have to give you hints along the way. Okay. Who had the most hits in the 2020 season on the first pitch of the at-bat? Oh, oh. Oh, most pitches, most hits on the first pitch should be a bat. Um, okay, first pitch swingers, the names that come to mind, Josh Hamilton, out of the league. Um, Altuve, not good this year. Uh, so, hits on the first pitch, I have no idea. Trey Turner. All right, all right. The number one and number two, both their, both their names start with the same letter. One of them has won an MVP. Both. Names start with the same letter. Both. First name. Recent MVP. First name. Recent MVP. It's not Carlos Delgado. Um, Both National League guys. National League 
guys. Uh, Juan Soto yet to win. Cody Bellinger wasn't good this year. Christian Yelich wasn't good this year either, and their names start with the same letter. Only one was an MVP winner, though. Cody Bellinger okay. had 11 first pitch hits this season. Where did that place him? 39th. Not or, bad. Or, or tied for 29th, really. Ryan Braun's a friend. No. But he's not that great anymore. First half of the alphabet. The letters in the first half of the first alphabet. First half of the alphabet. MVPs. Mookie Betts is good. Mm, Mookie Betts was 14th or tied for 11th. Okay. We're getting better. Uh, Freddie Freeman just won MVP. He's good. Number two. He was He's second. He's number two. 18 first pitch hits in the 2020 season for Freddie Freeman. And he just won MVP. Yep. So, same first letter. Frank Robinson? No. No, he hasn't played baseball in 50 years. Yeah, hard wrong. <clears throat> that would be a bad guess then. Uh, Francisco Cervelli? Mm-mm, mm-mm. So, this guy's not an MVP candidate. No, not yet. Fernando Tatis. Yep. Junior. Fernando Tatis had 19 first pitch hits. How you like that? Jimmy, I don't want to send you down your wormholes, but were a lot of those earlier in the year, and then that's why he started slumping because pitchers were like, hey, let's stop pitching to this guy. I can tell you the first one came on the 24th of July, so early on. Four in July. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten in August. And then one, two, three, four, five in September. So it, it waned off a little bit, but he was off. Yeah. I don't think there's a direct correlation. Um, now I will tell you who had the most first pitch home runs. And then that will be the end of the trivia. Now you know. Everyone go go do trivia. Who had the most first pitch hits for Nano Tatis? Ooh, first pitch home runs. Mm. Same position. Okay. Same city. As Fernando Tatis? No, as each other, the top two. Same position, same city. So D- Dansby? No, no. Erase everything about for, for Nando. You're phrasing this very odd. First, the most first pitch home run. It's runs. a new question. Whole completely. new question. Whole new ball. Whole game. new question. The number one and the number two play the same position in the same city. Okay. So, I mean, we're at New York is a possibility here. Sure is. Oh, what would the other possibility be? Ch- L.A. Chicago, L.A. Chicago. Okay. Okay. So how about Happ and Luis Robert? Mm, no. One so hit I the most. To... One hit the most home runs in all of baseball. So I'd guess Luke Voigt and Peter Alonso. Yep. Voigt had six. Alonso had seven. I wonder if that's a good or a bad thing. First pitch home runs. Yeah. I'm gonna put those down as good. Good. More impressive yeah. to have later home runs, I think. I guess. But it's not unimpressive. Count, kind of. Yeah. Yeah. All of Pete's came late. Pete took advantage. Alonzo took advantage of his slump, basically. It was like, hey. He got hot late. I'm yeah. not a threat anymore. I'll just, they're throwing me, get me over fastballs because I have bad stats. I'll just swing big. Didn't his numbers end up being fine? Did they? Because he was, he was having a bad start. He had 16 home runs, 231, 326, and 817 OPS, so 123 OPS plus. Yeah, OPS, so, OPS plus got there. I mean, not again, not his year from last year, but it, that's what's so weird about this past baseball season. I mean, that was 57 games from Pete Alonso. He would normally play 90 more. Jake, with two games left... <laughs> With two games left, Alonzo had 
13 home runs and a 745 OPS. In his last two games of his season, he went five for seven with three home runs and a double. And those two games change his stats from being like, eh, to eh. This whole year is disgusting, two, man. Two I, meaningless the, the games against the Nationals. And, I mean, you know, you could spin that either way, right? You can be like, yeah, Alonzo was was kind of bad this year. And it wasn't him. And, yeah, he lucks into two games. Or Pete Alonzo saying, like, I was just getting hot, and I was a week away from my stats getting to where they normally were. Maybe. That's crazy, though, how much it changed. 745 OPS to 817. I mean, just in, like, visual reaction to the number, that's a big difference. <laughs> I Such mean, bo- weird below year, 750 to above 800 is a big difference. Two games. Dude, Drew Smiley. Like, like Drew Smiley's, what, two bad starts away from not getting paid one year $11 million? Yeah. Just bizarre, man. Hey, do you know who number 17 on the Orlando City Soccer Club is? Uh, not off the top of my head. Because a lot of people gave me shit for my breakdown for calling him his number and not his name. And I want to remind MLS fans, right. nobody knows those people. Right. Watched a little MLS last night. Nani uh, is his name. And on. like like people were actually critiquing it. Like, how dare he call him number 17 and not Nani? Like, what are you talking about? I, I guess the argument there, I mean, now that you say it's Nani, I believe he's... Um, he's either a famous Bra- Brazilian soccer player or Spanish soccer player because MLS has this MLS's program for a while, like with David Beckham and yeah. stuff, was each team can bring in one famous guy at the end of their career to try to make things more popular. So I guess the argument would there there would be like if you're getting into this and you're looking at names, maybe you'd recognize Nani, but also come on MLS. Yeah. Sometimes I feel bad. Like, Barry Larkin, I called him number 11. That was, like, I just brushed it over. I should have said his name, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to feel bad about that one. At all. Nani's uh, Portuguese. That's my bad. Well, you know, Um, they conquered the Brazilians early on and made them speak their language, so you're all over it. Yeah, speak the same same language, him and Cristiano. Yeah, I, uh, so I watched a little... MLS last night because I needed a come down. Don't have my video games down here. Need sports. Uh, long day. And uh, so all that was on was, again, blanked on the league's name. So that's how big of a fan I am. But Seattle Sounders versus LAFC. Dude, you know, the part that actually made me sad is Taylor Twellman. Are you familiar with him, Jim? No. So he was a U.S. soccer guy, um, and he's got the famous, you might have seen it on the internet, but like U.S. soccer lost, and he has a famous like, what are we doing? <laughs> like he's, he's screaming. I think he was on SVP. It's a, it's a good clip. He's really good um, just as a commentator and like entertainer. Like the, when, Should we when hire him to do some, soccer coverage for us? Maybe. Maybe. Um, because he's really good, and I, I felt bad that he has to cover MLS because he's, like, really good, man. He's, he's just really good. He's really entertaining. And I was like, damn, that's a uh, – it sucks that he has to pretend to be dialed into MLS. That might be really rude, but also not. I followed him, and now, we're, now he's hired. He's our soccer Fun. guy. Tweeted him, everyone, and say, congrats – on landing the role of soccer guy at John Boy Media, hashtag soccer company, and we'll speak it into existence. I don't know. I okay. Don't, I don't follow him, but Jake, that's a ringing endorsement from you. Yeah. No, he's he's really good. And, uh, Jim, if you remember this a while back, um, Jess's psychic said that the next big leap for John Boy Media was going to be soccer. So I think it just happened. Jess's psychic said that. Jess's family psychic said that, yes. I want to say something that would be perceived. Completely fair. No. I think it'd be yes. 
I don't know the sex of the psychic. Right. What is it? Male. Great. I still want to say this. I would tell the psychic, name another sport. Okay. And if they can't, and I feel like they can't, that's an easy win. So here's my only thing. Because I think we both have similar stances on psychics. Are there bullshit artists that rob people of their money? Yes. Okay. The psychic is is on Team Jake. The psychic has peddled good vibes about me throughout the family. So I'm Team Psychic. If that ever goes south, then you need to start doing a little money train to the psychics. Well, yeah. She, Katie okay. saw a psychic and they said that, like, you know, I don't think this relationship's going to last. It was early on. Yeah. She wanted me to go into the psychic with her. I was like, trust me. Yeah, you, you don't, don't want, that. want that. You do not the want that. The psychic doesn't want that either. Yeah, big time. Because I can't hold in that. That's no. asking a lot. No, no, no. Um, I need baggage. Well, hey, there's, there's going to be nothing on Friday on the baggage watch in front because it's Thanksgiving Thursday. Monday, we did have an episode prepped. It's not baggage, but it's singled out, and it was pretty wild. And then we're back to yeah. it after that. So appreciate everyone that uh, has been coming on. I mean, we started advertising on breakdowns and other shows, and it's growing a little bit. Still needs to grow yeah. a lot to get it to where it's worthwhile. It's still cult vibes. It's still cult vibes, which is good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Halftime? Yeah, pretty much. Enjoy the Thanksgiving football. And the UConn versus CCSU. Huge game. Might live tweet it. Yeah, if I have access, but I'm going to be at my office. Yeah. And I really wanted to finish the stats that exist but don't matter that I have. Right. And I was going to, I came in super early today. I came in right after BBD. I left my house at like 720 or something. Uh, but I was dealing with a bunch of other shit. So I, I, I didn't get to edit it at all. So now I want to go home and hang out with the family. I, but I wanted to get the stats that exist out Wednesday because no one's going to care tomorrow. And no one's right. really going to care Friday. Right. So I crunched that. Then maybe I can do JJR stuff. I don't know. I've got a question for you. Yeah. Do you think this upcoming stats that exist but do not matter is going to get to the player it's about. Mm. That's you you know who it's about, right? So it's a tricky one. Yes. I would say maybe, but he doesn't care. Yeah. Okay. I was gonna say, like, given who the player is, I just don't think he's on the lookout for that at all. Yeah, and it's Mike Trout. I don't care about keeping yeah. a secret to the JGR crew. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really matter. But I don't know. It's weird when you find out, like, Kratzy, we did that, and he was like, the video from 2017 was on his radar. So it's yeah. weird, but the Kratz is different than Trout. Ah. Should I start trying to do it about guys that I think will react? I think that's what smart companies would do. No, because I... I mean, Mike Trout has been getting more involved, and I think this ties more into your agent theory. Like, I don't think Mike Trout is on the pulse of his Twitter, but I think Mike Trout's agent would maybe know if John Boy did something about Mike Trout. Yeah, so whoever runs his Twitter might respond. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, someone that's in the live chat just tweeted out, at Taylor Twelman, congrats on the job. Looking forward to John Boy sports coverage. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to be like, what? Yeah. <laughs> Come on down. We got gotcha. you. Um, I do think, so there's big, there's big burden on these. The last stats video got uh, a lot of views. 100K yeah. on YouTube. I think even <laughs> more on Facebook and, and Twitter. So a lot of pressure. They were sitting at like 20. See if they can keep it rolling. It's a push and pull yeah. if it's worth it. But I enjoy making them. Every time I film it with Zach, I deliver the last line, and then I look at Zach and be like, what the fuck was that? What happened? <laughs> well, who cares? Um, this one's pretty good. BBD connected a dot that's like, oh, shit. Mm. But I got to edit it because Ant's busy and Zach's busy. 
Um, I was going to say something else, but I forgot. The headline's good. Title's good. All right. Uh, hey, just to let everyone know, before we go to halftime, the John Boy Media Black Friday sale is up and running. 25% off anything you want. We got Jake Suck shirt, Savages in the Box, Astros, I'll Be Home for Christmas, Slam Diego, Dodgers Champion stuff, bunch of ugly Christmas sweaters, and tons going on. Shop.johnboymedia.com. Check it out. 25% off your order. Grab something for the family. So actually, I th- I don't know if there's new JJR designs, but the new Wake and Jake sweater for Wake and Jakers out there looks really cool. It's got noodle on it, which is hilarious. Yeah, the uh, the Wake and Jake sweater is pretty pretty unreal, pretty unreal with the the noodle sneaking in there and everything else. Yeah, we got a bunch of ugly sweaters, uh, some really cool baseball ones. So. You know, a, a lot of you guys, especially the JJR crew, you guys are in deep, so won't won't peer pressure you guys. But uh, you know, you're gonna be doing weird cyber ugly sweater parties where you're like, okay, this is exciting. Then you show your ugly sweater to the camera, and then you have a drink, and you're like, okay, this is weird again. So you know, it should be our sweater. So 25% off everything, and I think, I think over thirty dollars, you get a free sticker. So I mean, come on. How about that? Dude, what are you doing? Bill runs our newsletter, you know, and his yeah. he has a section and he crushes it. He's really good at it. Sign up for the newsletter if you want. But Jake Gift, I don't know when he added that, but it <laughs> makes yeah. me laugh. every t- Just that section, Jake Gift. This is a gift of you. <laughs> I'm not. It's always some gift. It's <laughs> really funny. Something wrong with me. Uh, dude, it's funny. All right. Let's go to halftime. So we're not eating anything today because Jake's not in. But, Jake, you had something you wanted me and BBD to eat? There is an option for something we could eat. I really don't want to eat it. It was a gift from Tim Melville. Yeah, which I think tells you all you need to know about it. It's been sitting literally under the monitor for for a week. so You probably shouldn't eat it. Jake's, Jake has had it on him. You got it, what, almost three weeks ago at this point? It's squid. Charboiled squid chips. I mean, it's packaged well. It's not like Packaged it's well. Yeah, it looks like food to me. But do we also want to make Jake eat some of that? Do you want us to wait? Because no. I think once it opens, then they go yeah, yeah, pretty, those are bad. pretty open. So I'll wait for you. Okay. I have the... Those are probably going to be bad, huh? I don't know. I, I think it might taste like flavored nothing, like air, like a like a like like those chips, those like pop chips that like are just like a crunchy wafer. You know what it looks like? It looks like the stuff you get at a Chinese food as you sit and wait, like with the sesame. A little bit. That's my guess. Um, all right. We have that. We have another thing. Maybe we put the other thing on that. Eat it. There's enough in there that we should be able to do one dry run and then that yeah, we'll, on that. Yeah, we'll do that next week. Or maybe we could put the Rhode Island syrup on that too because <laughs> it's supposed to be a decoration. It's supposed to be on or something. Whatever. So. Yeah. Instead of us just drinking syrup. <laughs> we botched that one. We botched that one. <laughs> we swung. Yeah. Uh, okay, so that's halftime, I guess. Jake's not here, so we won't be doing that. I have those, those cricket bites those bugs on mm. my desk when we cleaned up the studio after the world series it just got put on my desk so i have like the packet of bugs on my desk and uh, we need to reach out to that company and get some sponsorship going i don't know what yeah. if they have money it seems like such a no-brainer yeah at minimum get them to give us some more stuff and i think it, like once we that enough we'll just once say we, it. Um, once we start being a, able a to monthly have, shipment of yeah, bugs. W- once we start being able to have guests in person, which they're saying June twenty twenty one, we should be like vaccinated. My dad's getting the vaccine in a couple weeks. Hell yeah. So finding out if that goes horribly wrong, I guess. Well, you get it once, then you have to wait six weeks, then you have to get the second, second one, round. And then you're clear. Yeah, he said he's getting the first round. 
I think in two weeks. Hell yeah! So right right now you've got June as the like. Not world me, is not back. me. I read May, and I added June because I don't believe people. Okay, you added a buffer month. Yeah. Yeah, I've, I have no idea. I mean, vaccine sounds pretty dope. People already kind of don't care. We're like, we're peaking again. I, I don't know how the timeline Well, once they out. roll out the vaccine, it's going to get ugly because oh, people yeah. are going to be like, well, who the fuck cares? There's a vaccine coming. I'm just, and people are already living life in certain parts yeah. of the country. So once they start dosing out those vaccines and they start announcing that it's working, no one's going to care. And that's going to be tricky. Because if you get it, does the vaccine help? Can it only prevent? Can it cure? Because if it can cure and getting COVID puts you to the front of the line for vaccine and then you get cure and prevention Ooh. right away, you're going to have a fucking mess on your hands. People getting COVID to get the vaccine. But I have three months immunity because I got it. So, like, in my head, it's like, hell yeah. Yeah. Only, like, 20 people have gotten it twice. Out of the millions yeah. of people. Nick Saban just got it for the second time. Nick Saban did? Yeah. Well, he's 26 or something like that. Then. Yeah. And this time he's, like, having symptoms, which kind of sucks for him. But. Mm, that does suck. So, anyway. I'm Save. guessing he gets good medical care and should be fine. But Yeah. Um. Whatever. What I was saying was, once we can have guests in again, it'd be hilarious just to toss a packet of bugs in front of them and oh, let, yeah. let them do what they will. Because they'll just pick it up and be like, well, what's this? You guys yeah. eat these? And then we're like, yeah, try it. Would lead to a good bug montage oh. by the end. Saban was false positive first time, reported by Nick Moy and Matthew Paulson in the chat. Yeah, it's very rare to get it twice. Like, incredibly, incredibly rare. Sound like Joe Rogan right now talking about mm. science stuff. Mm. Tom Green was on Joe Rogan, and I was very interested, and then it was like three hours long, and I was like, I don't have time. Yeah, I don't... I don't know. I don't know. I don't have any time. If I worked a nine to five, I would. That's all I did. I guess you're like driving down to Jersey and stuff. That's what, hour and a half? My input level when I worked a nine to five and didn't make content, I just consumed. Right. Remember how remember it? It was insane. Top tier. I watched like one percent twenty shows and listened to like twenty podcasts because I was just from eight AM to six PM I had headphones in and I was consuming something. When I worked my editing job. Now it's gone. Yeah. Now we're making it, baby. Yeah. All right. You want to go to the news? I think so. I think we got some good questions coming up at the end, too. So, How yeah, long are we? I think our, we're at an hour right now. It's only That's crazy. That's two weeks in a row I've asked where <laughs> we're at, and it's exactly an hour. We're an hour and yeah. three minutes. Okay. So. Uh, but yeah, I think I think I have the mailbag organized pretty well. We should be able to sink mm. a good amount of time. Mailbag, mailbag. Kind of got a sneak peek at them. I don't know if you want that, but I did put them at the bottom because I picked three. All right, I, I don't want a sneak peek. Yeah. Let's do the news. I put them there so I know what order I wanted. What do you have the news soundbite? Finding, finding. I read the news today, oh boy, and though the news was rather sad, well, I just had to laugh. Well, it's six o'clock, time for the news. All right, we got our first story. A surprisingly strong woman was arrested for poking holes in 13 expensive melons with her finger. Mm. How does you do that? Do they have video of it? That's a really strong finger, unless it's the thumb. Oh, my God. It's a tweet. They have, like, a picture of, like, the melons. <laughs> I think these were soft melons. 64-year-old mm. suspect entered a supermarket and allegedly stabbed the baker's dozen of melons with her fingers at approximately 130. It's important to note these aren't just ordinary melons, but the renowned Ubarro King which often make headlines for selling at exorbitant prices. The victimized melons had a combined worth of 135 U.S. dollars. No security cameras caught her in the act, so it is unclear how the police managed to track down the culprit. The nature of, the, of their detective work and the suspect's motives have not been revealed, leaving it open to wild speculation. Hmm. 
Wild, I mean, man. Heavy. Heavy, man. Yeah, I didn't know 11 melons could cost 135, which again still isn't crazy. I mean, we've got a I think we've got a better headline than a story here, but I don't know. It's late at night, you're at the grocery, it's you $12 have a each. going. It's $12 each. Doesn't seem that crazy. Shove your thumb in a melon, you know. How much is a cantaloupe? In Australia, they call it rock melon. Cantaloupe shopping tab. Okay, about three dollars. So these are expensive melons. I don't. You think she grabbed it like this and then pushed her thumb in, or do you think she was? Uh, going, this was clearly a, a penis. Sixty-four-year-old mm, woman strap on. Yes. Fucking the melons. If you saw the security footage, what would you like more? If she was doing laps around mm. the supermarket, fake shopping, and every time she passed it, she just stuck her hand in and slowly poked another lap, 11 laps, 11 slow pokes, or walked in, direct shot straight to the melon, bam, 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 walked out. Like, that was her only motive. Which, which video has you more entertained? So it's the it's always the secret third option, and you know that. Uh, so she, this is an old woman. She didn't have a penis. I lied about that. Okay. But she walks up to the melon section, and she grabs one, and her finger goes through. And she's like, she's a little scared. She's a little nervous. But then she also feels this powerful feeling that she hasn't felt in years. So she one finger goes in. Then she does it to another melon. And then she just has this powerful melon high where she's just finger fucking. Oh, my bad God. Look what I can do. She hasn't felt that in years. It's interesting that she could have chose one melon and just poked right, a ton of holes. To I understand poking the second melon because you're like, whoa, was that a was weak that a melon? Fluke? Yeah. Let me try another melon. And then she's like, hold up. Were both of those weak? And then maybe after 11, she was like. I'm just amazing. Yeah, I think she lost control and it was just like boom and boom, 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 boom. It's nuts. All right. So we Happy got a her. badass melon poker. Singapore smiley face activists in one man protest charged with unlawful assembly. That's a headline that doesn't make sense. A Singapore activist known as smiley face was charged with unlawful assembly when dur with, during his one-man protest. That's a better order of things. So one dude stood in the middle of the street. He held up a sign that had a smiley face on it, like a, it's a basic cardboard box with a smiley face on it, and he got charged for unlawful assembly. Wouldn't that be more loitering? I know I'm not a lawyer. What If it's one person, isn't he's just loitering? I mean, is it how he defines it? If he says, I'm protesting, they're like, oh, okay, well. But it's unlawful assembly. He was definitely protesting. He got charged with unlawful assembly. Assembly. But he didn't assemble anything. He assembled that sign. He could be, he could be fined and he, he, $3,700. He did the sign holding back in March for what that's worth. He's just getting charged now for it, I think. That's tough. I don't know. Are we on this guy's side? No, but I'm also okay. not on the cop side either. Okay. This guy, well, I don't know. What was his end game? I still don't know. What do we think of the smiley face here? It looks the like nose, a it looks like the, a bear to me. It's 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 there's something off with the nose and how big the mouth is. Yeah, the nose really it's really jarring. It changes everything. Why did he do the nose? I think that's why this kid's getting in trouble. Outside of the outside of the police station, too. Yeah. Unlawful assembly. Adds another risk. What, what is that? I'm guessing that they told him, hey, please... Please don't do this anymore. A couple times? Yeah. I don't know, man. I think they told him many times, you can do this, just 
without the nose. Draw a better smiley face. I don't know what kind of creature that is. That stinks. What if like there's an employee at the police station that looks just like that? Ooh. And he's like, so he's just taunting. He's, or he looks nothing like it, but he goes to all the other police and he's like, do you see that? He's holding up a picture of my face. Just drew my face. And they're like, what, dude? You look not, that's not even a human. Like, you don't look. Oh, I like that. The cop that was having a bad day. Yeah. Is that me? You mocking me? And they're like, no, dude. That looks like kind of a small bear. <laughs> yeah, that's. God. Yeah, I've got that as a two out of 10 on the smiley face scale. Yeah, it's bad. You can tell it's a smiley face. But if you take away the nose and the circle on the outside of the face, it gets instantly better. Instantly. Even even just the nose, I think you're up to a 6 out of 10. It's easy to draw a good smiley face. Less is more. L-I-M. Next up, Florida man wrestles his puppy from the jaws of an alligator. Did you see this video? I did. I did. Um, and, uh, his voice is awesome. Gravely like this. Well, obviously, guy his voice would, is like that. The, the guy that would save a puppy from an alligator. And, yeah, he's got the cigar in the mouth throughout. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you, Jim, you know this touches my animal heartstrings. Um, you know what? The first time I watched it, I was a little horrified, but it has a happy ending, so I was into it. And then you real okay, I am soft as all hell, but that's not a big gator. Like, I think if my puppy was in the mix with that gator, I do think I would get involved. You would, but I don't know if you would go to... Oh, the- I don't think I save it. Like, I think I get in the water just to, you know... Tell- I, I, I need the earlier in the video because it just opens up with the gator, like, deep. Underwater. And, he, and, the, and the dog fully under. Yeah. So, like, did the gator grab the dog, go underwater, and he ran and, like, jumped and found it? Because, like, or did he... He had to have hands on the gator as it was going back, like grab the tail. I don't because how do you find it underwater? You know, it's a great question. I'm I'm assuming you know they're in the yard or they put the dog out to go to the bathroom or something. Gator snags it, goes in the water. Guy chases it. Um, and by the way, what's that camera? Um, maybe this is low key marketing for the Florida Wildlife Federation. Because why is that camera so perfect, and why is there an ad on this video? Who who did? What is the camera? That's a great question. I mean, we've got different camera angles. Was that just another camera angle? There's one camera angle. It's perfectly still. Like, this isn't someone holding a phone. No. Wait, I'm pretty weirded out about this camera. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's the same angle. They just they cropped Zoom. in on the video. But that Pretty is high quality camera. That is super weird. You know, if it was someone holding it, I'm pretty weirded out about the video and when it got turned on. I wanted to fully believe this, but how did that get turned on? It, maybe it's like a laptop sitting on a picnic table, but who turned the camera on there? Oh, just the laptop sitting on a picnic table set up perfectly for the crocodile eating the dog. Someone, I can't read the full chat, but I think someone has an answer. It's suspect. Whole thing's suspect. He set up the recording before going to save it. I mean, come on. Your dog's getting eaten by a gator, so you set up a high quality video camera and then go save the dog. Some it's there's there's a fishy stink all over the story now. Because even if that theory's right, then I don't know how many dogs did we go through. Is this puppy number four? Okay, that's get- a park reservation observation camera. In this guy's yard? Are they at a public place? Maybe a trail cam situation. Sometimes there's parks that you can just like tap into cameras to just get the wildlife. Sure. Um, and hey, maybe it is a perfect storm. And again, 
like this guy getting in the water with that little gator saving the puppy all in and you know where my brain jumps because it's a bad brain is like what what did that puppy think just happened puppies don't think anymore right yeah puppy thinking is trending really down telling me I think dogs will be really smart in like a hundred thousand years. Mm -mm. How long did it take humans to start talking and stuff? I'm sure there's some answer to that somewhere. There's definitely an answer. I used to listen to a linguist podcast and there was one episode like the origin of language. Yeah. Crazy. Utah helicopter crew discovers. Awesome. Oh, we got news. Uh, the Steelers Ravens game Thursday night postponed to Sunday. Wow, Thanksgiving. So night Thanksgiving game. ruined. That was the good game that day. What's the other game on Thanksgiving now? Um, we just did this Cow- on Waking Jake. Cowboys it's Washington. Cowboys. Cowboys and the Washington football team, and then the uh, Lions, Lions Texans. That's I wonder if they slide those games to later to fill the yeah. night slot. I don't know. At least slide Cowboys back. Sports. Sports. Uh, this next story is annoying. A Utah, a Utah helicopter crew discovers a mysterious metal monolith deep in the desert. I don't know if you saw this, Jake. I saw this already. It's just a big metal column, basically. Okay. Uh, it's it's in the middle of the desert. Um. Clearly some artist or someone planted it. They're like, we don't know how it got here. And there's like people trying to say aliens and stuff like that. But mm. I think even the guy in the article says like, you know, it's probably some new wave artist that's trying to. Re- oh, yeah. I mean, when you see it, it's like, okay, I don't care. I mean, that is instantly. Instantly a piece of art. Yes. Yes. All right. Monolith, huh? Never heard that. I don't know if I said it right. I think so. I feel Thank like I've God. heard of it, but no idea where. Um, the Bureau of Land Management will be deciding whether to further investigate the situation. So that's huge. Don't. Don't do it. When you type in monolith, um, Air's Rock comes up. Monolith. Like, is the. Why do I know that word? Is Which the, isn't like, called Ayers like Rock East? anymore. It's called Uluru because they gave the Aboriginal name back to the, the natives of Australia. Don't put that on me. I got yelled at um, by uh, Jess's stepdad because I, I, he mentioned Ayers Rock and I was like, what was that? And he's like, oh, no. And then he described what it was, and I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, have, um, you, have you, like, looked at pictures of but, there? Is Uluru? Uluru, yeah. It's crazy. Um, I mean, is the Pennsylvania mo- Monument and a monolith? Well, how is Ayers Rock a monolith? How are both those things the same? How is that metal statue and... Uluru, the same thing. There are four monoliths on the monument. I'm out. A monolith is a single great stone, often in the form of an obelisk or column. A granite monolith stands at the center of the park. Out. Yeah, I'm over it. I'm over it as well, Jake, young Jake. Uh, how did Stonehenge get there? Same way the pyramids did. Someone built it. Keep telling yourself that. How, I mean, they can build the pyramids. They can put Stonehenge up. Yeah. Then the big Isn't question, that crazy? Then the big question is why? And it's, well, probably some religious ritual shit. And then I'm not interested anymore. Religion and, or boredom. Probably religious. It looks very much like a prayer circle or chant circle. But like people are searching for answers for years. I'm I'm satisfied with the 
probably that. I don't need the official. Yeah, I'm good on it. Still like to go. Oh, yeah. I think it'd be awesome to see. Do you know there's this term that they have in Scotland for like, ooh, what's it term? It's for like high places, Scottish places uh, make you feel good name. They have these terms. Ah, fuck. Like magical places in the Scottish Highland. There's a name for them. And uh, it's like when you're there, you feel something. You feel like a spirit or you feel like, oh, shit. Um, I can't think of the damn name. Okay. But it's cool because, like, you're at the edge of, like, the Scottish Highlands and, like, you're, like, up in the sky. Obviously, you're going to feel like, fuck. Like, when you were at Sedona, did you feel like this is bigger than it? Like, you know. Well, that's because there's vortexes, Jim. Yeah. Well, they have a Scottish name for it. But I can't think of it. Kieran is from Scotland. He hasn't. He has no idea what it is. But I was reading about it the other day. I can't okay. think of it. But I'd like to be able to think of it. You will at some point in your life. Yeah, or just come across. Your mom once Facebooked me a list of like ten words that they, I bet you didn't know existed. Sonder. That rings a bell. Sonder. Yes, yeah, Sonder. The profound feeling of realizing that everyone, including strangers, passing the street has a life. No, that's not it. But I was just going to pivot to Sonder because that's right. the word that your mom sent me on Facebook. She like shared a post, like 10 words you didn't know existed. And Sonder's yeah. the one that still rings with me. Like when, like I do it all the time. Like when you're stuck in traffic and you see the headlights. Count the headlights on the highway. Tiny Dancer. And you're like, fuck. This, every car has a different person in here that's going to a different place that came from a different place that is like in their own head dealing with their own life. And then you're like, this is just one section of the highway. That feeling is called Sonder. I have, Sonder. It, have it a lot. Like, we're so small. Like, we don't matter at all. Nothing matters. Yeah. Yeah. All right, what mailbag questions do we have? Oh, a new cameo, new cameo request. Is that a good one? Mm. Group chat called Lucky Strikes wants to shout out. I did a cameo request to someone that had <laughs> wiffle ball highlights, and they wanted me to voice over, like, narr- not do a breakdown, just like, Play by play, mm. I gave him like tw- like ten different voices. <laughs> it was like big swing and a home run for Derek, something like that. So I did it like I was having a lot of fun with it. Big swing and a home run for Derek. <laughs> <laughs> big places. swing and a home run for Derek. <laughs> Kid was like, "Thanks, thanks, man. Thanks for this." Yeah. Um, mailbag. Jake, can you do the mailbag sound effect? Uh, uh, mail. Mail. Are you going to read them to us, BBD? Yeah, I'm trying to decide if I want to give you the option of what order you want to do them in. I like all of them. I don't know them. I, I, I know. I avoided looking at them. So you, <sighs> you just choose. Well, pick one, two, or three. Two. Okay. This is the one I was. Mo- I think you guys will like the most. Okay. So. One twenty-four. The school needs a new mascot. Ooh. Okay. Yeah. So this comes from Jake. He's a multimedia. I'm a. Hey, I'm Jake. I'm a multimedia teacher at Sylacauga High School in Sylacauga, Alabama. Can you spell that for me? S Y L A C A U G A. Is it pronounced Silicaga? So that was me putting in my best guess because it looked kind of like Mississauga, Canada. Silica- Which I also don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. It could be Silicaga. Silicauga? Caga? Um, 
Okay, hold on. So I, I have a YouTube video here, Secrets in Silicaga. More than 25 years ago, a single mother of three was gunned down in a violent convenience store robbery. And it didn't take long for police to identify their main suspect and even less time for a jury to find him guilty. His sentence, death. Now, new <laughs> facts put that verdict into question. Political reporter Max Reese investigated every angle of this case, and he found Say more the town twists name. and turns than a Hollywood screenplay. Tonight, he reveals the secrets we found in Silicaga. Silicaga. I mean, what a, what a tough video to choose. The, the video is just called Secrets in Silicaga. Yikes. <laughs> um... <laughs> So, Silicaga. Okay. So he continues. Our school's mascot is the Aggies. However, our mascot is is a red devil, like the literal like drawing they use. But they're called the Aggies because they used to, they were once an agricultural school. I spent the last couple of years trying to get to the bottom of why our mascot is a red devil, and I have not been able to find any rhyme or reason. I hate when things don't have a meaning, and from a branding standpoint, folks in the Bible Belt hate that our mascot is a devil, but no one has ever been able to come up with a good alternative. With you guys being into sports, media, branding, culture, and random towns in America, I'd love to hear your take on what our new mascot should be. Love all your shows. Thank you so much. Thanks for the great stuff from Alabama Jeek. Okay. I, that music was from, I found myself on a website from 1993 that has auto-played music behind it. My first thing, if you want to rebrand, the Cougars seem so easy. The Silicaga Cougars. Rolls off the tongue. You have weird alliteration where it's the Kaga yeah. Cougars, Silicaga Cougars. That sounds perfect if you want a real one. Sounds like the Silicaga Secrets would be great. Sounds like there's a lot of death in it. Uh, Nate Steele put that in the chat. I'm trying to find the history of the Red Devil because... Red Devil is different than Blue Devils. Like I think the yeah. Blue Devils... Is a fun spin on the devil. Like, it's the devil, but it's it's a blue devil. Yeah. It's like a fun version. Red devil is like, that's just the devil. You're just yeah. describing the devil. I initially jumped to the Silicaga Senators. Not um, bad. And normally, the senator as a mascot does nothing for me, but I really like it with the word Silicaga. Um... I guess maybe if I got an op if I got a B side of the track, maybe the Silicaga Sillies. Okay, I don't think they're gonna go for that because it's hard to hard to like you know be a football team, go out on a Friday night, and you're the Sillies. Oh, get silly, baby! That's silly football. Get, let's get silly tonight. Let's get silly tonight. Uh, that's not bad. It's not bad. I'm on another really weird website. Called the Origin of the Red Devil. Uh, okay, so there was a company called there was a cement company called the Red called Red Devil. Some of the Red Devil cement bags were found at the construction site, which gave the impetus to claim the Red Devil as a school mascot. Imagine if the cement company was like, well, yeah, we'll give you cement, and for 5% off, you guys got to be the Red Devils, and that's the reason there's Red Devil mascots all over. It's a good deal. Yeah, I, I mean, Senators is good. Cougars is good. Those are both normal. If you actually wanted to get a, a board to pass them. I mean, if you're trying, again... You, so you need a board to pass this stuff. I mean, all these always end up being lame because you need everyone to like them and people to not be offended. If you're trying to be unique, I'm I'm really liking the sillies. There would be so many people in town that don't even have a kid at the high school. I'd be so pissed. Oh yeah, and whatever you change it, what people care. Yeah. About the dumbest things. Silicaga. Secrets in Silicaga. I like the secrets too. Yeah, that's not bad, but I do think it links to that murder article that you just murder report. What's the town called, dude? What if? I just thought of a terrible what if because I don't want to make jokes about murder and stuff. What about the Silicaga Sons? Yeah, could be. Um, like this dude calls in about his town name, right? 
trying to change the the voodoo of his town, change the name. They got a death story in the news. And the first <clears throat> thing we do is play the death story. Yeah. Uh, I'd rather you not say we there. I mean, I didn't I didn't do it on purpose. I didn't know what that was. You clicked the article on purpose. Yeah, I thought it was going to be like, welcome to the Silicaga Nightly News, and then it was going to end. Secret secrets are no fun. Yeah. Now I'm reading the article about it. I, I can get out of here. Yeah. I think we helped. Silicaga Cougars. Cougars? Okay. Cougars. I like the way that flows. It is because usually alliteration is the same letter starting, but you're hitting the right. second consonant on Silicaga. What about the Cogs? Silicaga Cogs. Cogs. Um, so someone Cox. put that. I didn't even see that in the chat before I said it. Cox. Game Cox. Game Cox. Yeah. All right. What's the next mailbag question? All right. There's your solution. Do you want to do you want to end the show with a ranking? Yes. Okay. So okay. first we'll do and we'll be quick on whatever this one is. Yeah, this one doesn't need to be long. too too lengthy, but this is about uh fighting things. Oh, I clicked on the ranking one. <clears throat> this comes from Travis. Hi Travis. Hey guys, love the show and join the new format. Here's a situation we ask every new hire at my office. It's provided a series of lively debates over the years. You're in a Thunderdome. It's you versus a Falcon. You both know it's either you or the Falcon fight to the death. No weapons, no barriers, no time limit. Just you and a Falcon in a Thunderdome. Who wins? Let's do that one first. There's a second part of the question. I do think I, I can beat a Falcon eventually. Like, I'd have to withstand some initial attacks to figure out the Falcon strategy. I do think I could then adjust. All you got to do is protect a scout because their talons can really get you like the staircase documentary. So you let the Falcon take a couple passes. You hold the back of your head like you're in tornado drill in the Midwest textbook. I don't have one. And then you see it's game. Then you got to figure it out a strategy from there. I don't know what it would be. Once you get the Falcon to the ground, you can do damage. But it'll take a couple, you know, you got to lose a couple battles before you can win the war. My initial reaction was to go to the most open place in this said Thunderdome and lay on my back. So I can see the Falcon coming from every angle. And I mean, if he wants to, if he's going to come down on me, like, this falcon can't scoop me off the ground. I'm fat now. So I'm covering the back of my head. And, I mean, if he grabs a chunk of me, that's fine. Because you're right, Jim. Once he's on the ground, it's over. I mean, if the falcon is in my hands, I have won the war. So, um, yeah, I, it's tough to picture the falcon giving a death blow. The, you know, I heard no weapons mentioned. Can I grab <clears throat> rocks and stuff? Like, I'm probably doing that. Um, maybe a good, maybe a good tree branch, you know, something you could swing at it to keep it a little bit at a distance. But yeah, I'm, I'm not too freaked out by the Falcon. Um, I mean, I'd be interested, like how long can they stay awake? Like if I fall asleep, am I pretty much dead? Like what happens then? Okay. I ha yeah, I thought about the sleeping too. Cause I thought trying to out, outdo the Falcon, stay up later than it. But right. if I'm just in a Thunderdome, Thunderdome with no entertainment, like I'm probably asleep quick. Is it wide open? Is there terrain? What's going on? There's um, a video called When Falcons Attack, and it's a construction worker on the ledge of a building and a falcon attacking him. Now, he has gloves and a helmet on, but he's on the ledge of like a building high up. Right. And, you know, I've just become more confident. Yeah. Because, I mean, the Falcons only got one move. It's the the dive and swoop, right? Yeah. The, I agree with the with the point you made earlier. I think both of you have made it. But that, like, you get it into your hands, you can start just kind of whipping that thing around and do some yeah. real damage to it. I have myself on the ground and stomping it. Oh, I think okay. if, you give it, if you give it the room to fly away, it can, though, which is kind of tough. 
I'm, once you're I mean, once if, you're in, you kind of have to be all in and like take care of business. Yeah, if it's uh, you know, one of the few books I've read, which is also kind of disturbing, is The Ringer. Um, and I think when that bird's in your hands, you're uh, you're going for the throat. And the uh, but the other point that I think plays in the Falcon's favor, he is, I think he has way fewer hangups about killing you than we would it. Yeah, Falcons well, it's the don't classic, have a, they don't I have mean, a he's the attacker. Yeah. Like I'm not trying to attack he started bird this. at all. All right, I have a falcon attacking a drone here. Some guy with, that needs to shave his head, but is hanging on. In there. I don't know if a like what's losing. It's to the death. It's tough to picture a falcon just killing me. Like of like. Dying? Like, how does that happen? Do they, like, rip out my, my throat? Neck? I guess so. If they, like, get their claw in your jugular, you could lose, right? Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Like, I mean, I'm, A, I'm getting so weird with it. But, like, I think if I was in this current outfit, I think I would take my shirt off and almost, like, tie it around my neck. As neck protection. And your head. Go the top yeah. around your head and the sleeves around your neck. Yeah. Like if that... And I cover my eyes because I like, you know, I like to live dangerously. Like what are we allowed to have? Because if it makes a huge difference if I'm allowed to be take my shoes off and put it in my hand as a swinging thing. Once yeah, I think that's fine. If I have that, then I'm even more confident. Because that's the thing. I think when that hawk gets close, you can even do the classic, you know, it's 10 feet away. You do one distraction shoe that it's got to, like, dodge. And then I think you're kind of in the driver's seat. Does a falcon care if I, like, caw at it loudly as it's coming? Oh, I'm cacawing a lot. Like, that would maybe confuse it a bit, right? Like, yeah. I think I do a pretty loud caw, caw in its face and then swing the shoe and now I have myself beating the Falcon in one pass. And again, this is where the bio. See, all I need to do is to develop a game plan. Are we just in an empty bubble? It's me and that bird. Like I've got eyes on him the whole time. And then the other counter would that is the, if there's a forest area, I mean, I'm getting a stick. And if I have a stick, I'm very confident. I had us in like a stadium, right? Okay. Like I had us in like a like basketball an empty stadium. Arena. Yeah. But I need it okay. to be a small arena because I don't want the Falcon to gain a ton of speed. Like I don't want it coming I, down from I think the heavens. You have, I think in this, I think in this situation, you have to give the Falcon that. Otherwise, he's playing in my arena. So okay, we're we're in Minute Maid Park. That's too dark. Can you put us in a a park that has light? We're in Tampa. Same okay, beat. perfect. Too much light. So, yeah, I mean, he's got some speakers he could hide on and stuff. That's bullshit. Don't be a pussy about it and hide behind speakers. I got nothing to hide the on the ground. to be a puss. Yeah. I'm beating the Falcon. Okay. So the follow-up to this, once Ooh. you may or may not get past the Falcon, it's you versus five-year-old children, same Thunderdome. How many five-year-olds can you take on before they overtake you? You and the five-year-olds know it's a fight to the death. It's you or them. How many can you take on? A lot. These guys keep up the great work. A, a lot. Like, to the death, a lot. I guess no weapons. It would have, I have any it weapons, would be it's a their lot, best, lot. It would be whatever amount of five-year-olds can smother me like the bees smother the wasp. Like, if they can just, like, build a dog pile and I'm underneath it and they just suffocate me. And I mean, are they coming out one at a time? And like they they're regular five-year-olds, right? Like they feel pain like a five-year-old does? Yeah. The five-year-olds, they're a like lot. smaller than you think. I yeah, think. I mean, I, yeah, I'm, I've. Like you have, you have young. I worked with kids. I, I mean, you just, again, you put a shoe in each hand and you just start helicopter windmilling. And I mean, as soon as they get, no one's coming back. It's like kind of like when you watch Power Rangers. And like they punch the dead guy, and then the, they punch the guy, and then he's on the ground forever. And you're like, well, why didn't that guy just stand up and keep fighting? That's what like a five year old's not going to keep coming 
back if you get them good. They're going to go run to their mom or whoever. So, yeah, you could it's, you could beat a lot of five-year-olds up. And I think, I, I think that's out of the situation. I mean, I think the five-year-olds in that situation know that they're kill or be killed. I don't think they have um, it in them. So now you have like a professional, like you have an adult brain in a five-year-old body. That's a different question. It's not an adult brain. I mean, it's just the single tweak that it's a five-year-old trying to kill you. No five-year-olds have tried. He's to aware kill of the you. stakes so going in. I, I think that's the tweak. They don't even know what these, death is. Well, that's the whole situation. That's the whole yeah. game we're playing. So, um, I don't know. I mean, I also like the image of using the first one I kill as a weapon. <laughs> um, I think that's fun. Yeah. You know, twirling it around and stuff. You kind of. So lost yeah, I mean, if, that's way too dark. Eventually, fatigue kicks oh, in. Um, and yeah, I just the thing I need to know is: Are they coming one at a time? And there's like a minute time limit. And if I don't kill it in that minute, now I've got two. Are they coming out in droves? Like, okay, here's one. Okay, here's two. I think here's I think these three. are two like, different questions. Like, you can you can yeah. have different answers because how many can you take if all of them are coming at once? Or how many so just if, like if, successive battles would you win? Right. If a group of five-year-olds is coming at once, God, I don't know. Is it like twenty? Is that low? I think that's a that feels like a fair guess. Yeah, I, I don't. They'd have to do the smother thing. Otherwise, yeah, they need right. a, they need to like find a way to work together to some degree, and it'd yeah. be a lot of them. Think about how many five year olds can touch you at once. It doesn't matter if there's you know it's like kind of like a, a crowded bar. Front rows getting service. Everyone else is just waiting in line. So really, no matter how many come, you're just dealing with five that are in your immediate circle. Right, but I think you have to move so they can't do the swarm technique, and that's when I think fatigue kicks in. See, I think, yeah, I think you'd you'd just start spinning the first crop, and they'd be, then you'd just maybe run around and spin a little bit, go over there, spin, dodge them. You're faster than them. Five steps or twenty steps for them. I think it's a right, lot easier. That turns into a lot of movement pretty quickly. Because you also if have you to kill, up, up this to you also ten, have to kill while you're doing this, which is pretty exhausting. Up this to ten year olds, and like I'm dead quicker. Okay. Like well, five, yes, I, five is in. way too young. And if you're they, do, if they're they doing, hurt you. if they're doing like successive, like you're battling one at a time, the number gets really big because you're just doing one on one battles. Yeah, it really, does just until you get it's a really tired. Sad thought too. No. Yeah. 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 Okay. World War Z style, as the chat has deemed it, it can be a reasonable number. They can overtake you if they just. All swarm you, but five year olds so can for sure. Five year olds can't really hurt you unless they scratch or bite or like eyes and shit. Mm, I mean, if if your hands are tied behind your back, grab your penis off. Yeah, maybe their best bet would be tickling me for a while, tickling me till I suffocate myself from laughing. How much is a five year old? Seventy pounds? Probably like not, not even. even. I've done a lot of work with six-year-olds. Yeah, and uh, How much they're not they even weigh? that. They're not even that big. So this is like a year younger than that. Five-year-olds are still pretty small. Thirty pounds. Thirty to forty pounds. 30, it yeah. says. Four. Okay. All right. What are I we? I mean, if there's twenty of them. 20 times 4 is what? Nobody can do that math. That 800 pounds? I mean, that's a lot. Yeah, if they organize a sit-on attack, they got me. Right. But you can get through like 10 easily. Like you could get through the first wave yeah. of 10 easily, and then it's you versus 10, and they can't. that strategy's gone. That's what I'm saying. I mean, if all 20 are unleashed at once, that's when I think I'm first like, okay. If I if I trip or something, I think it's game. Should ask like a kindergarten teacher. Like, hey, if the whole room turned against you, you think you could handle it? I think they'd be like, think yeah. That's ever, think that's ever happened? Movies. <laughs> Not five-year-olds, but that'd be hilarious. Pretty good 
yeah. scene in one of those last episodes of New of New Girl. If you remember that late, I, I didn't watch the late seasons. Uh, I didn't either until pretty recently. They and did? then um, they tie the bow. Okay. And I, it, when I saw Friends several weeks ago, they threw that episode on, which was a weird call, but. Oh, I thought you said you were watching Friends. No, they were watching no, when I was call. seeing like oh. my friends, they oh. threw that episode of New Girl on. It's kind of a weird call. I got gotcha. you. All right, what are we ranking? All right, so oh yeah, you haven't gotten to see like the title of the episode yet, so you really didn't know because it's not up today. It's up on the title of the episode. Yeah, I have no yeah. idea. So this comes from Aaron. Hey guys, what's your ranking of orange juice, apple juice, grape juice, and cranberry juice? And the apple juice is apple juice, not cider. That's a whole different ball game. Feel free to throw in some other juices if necessary. Let me write this down. I, I wrote it in the uh, in the JJR doc. Because I, I put it. At the no bottom. one's gonna agree with my order, um, so I apologize. But I this is very easy for me. Like very easy. I have a clear one, two, three, four. Is there an apple, orange, grape. I think I have a clear four. My clear four is vast majority of people's clear one. I do not like orange juice. Don't like the way it leaves my mouth feeling. Don't like it as it goes down or when it lingers in my mouth. Kind of just that. So I don't. I don't know if that's a clear one here. I, I think, think orange I juice think is the most for popular. Everyone, it's going to be either these, no? their one or four for the most part. I, I'm going apple, grape, cranberry, orange. I don't really like cranberry juice either. So that's where I'm. I'm going to be the outlier. I think cranberry is my one. Um, I, I like that cranberry juice. Some it's the only juice on this list that sometimes I'll have a craving for, and I'll be like, okay, yeah, I kind of want a little cran, cran right now. Um, so I'm I'm probably cran one. I'm grape last. I don't know, think um, I've had grape juice since I was a tiny kid. I just Googled grape juice to see what the containers even look like, and they don't really ring a bell. But I like yeah. a lot of grape stuff. I don't think I've had – I'd have to retry grape juice. It's very much just in limbo. I don't know how I feel about it. I know I don't like cranberry. I know I don't like orange. I know I yeah, I mean, like I, apple. But I cut apple with half water these days because it I, is I so could, sweet. I could see grape juice being the consensus last, um, but again, I'm biased there because it's my last. So I'm, I'm cranberry. I'm probably orange, but I I don't drink any orange juice. I'm not a big juice guy. Well, once you I'm find out, big. it's really just sugar. Yeah, none of it's any kind of really yeah. good for you. Like, oh, this is actually yeah. terrible for me. Yeah. As a kid, people make juice out to be like something good. Yeah. Like, oh, this is horrible. It's like candy in a glass. Yeah. They should teach. And I think, that's, should... I think that's where orange can make an argument because I think there can be. Like, yeah. 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 That is juice. like apple juice is just sugar in a glass. Right. Like cranberry juice is just sugar in a glass. Sure is also. Yeah. If you dug for a good orange juice, I think those exist like actual oranges and yeah. shit. Well, there is um, actual apple juice, too. But the vast majority of what you drink as a kid and what you yeah. grow up is just is just candy in a glass. So yeah, probably like the cran, fresh squeeze cran, orange, orange juice apple, is a common thing grape. you can find. Yeah, you usually get there's an apple juice that it's Katie's an- dad used to get that was like apples, and it yeah. was really good. I don't know what it brand it was, but we used to get the apple juice, and I remember at one point I had to start cutting it with water because I was like, "This is too sweet." You ever try to drink a Capri Sun as an adult? No. Because, like, as a kid, I liked Capri Suns. I had, like, one of my nephews as an adult, and I was like, oh. almost the same reaction to the first time I drank a beer. Like, oh, my God, people drink this? Yeah. It tastes Get like, older. It tastes like stale, sweet. I enjoy the rankings at the end. McDonald or fast food last time. So if you got any more, bring them our way. Open to it. Uh, JJR, is it JJR? JJR at johnboymedia.com. JJR at johnboymedia.com. Um, 
Send in some questions. So if questions, one of you rankings. each week can do a ranking, not all of you. Well, we can spread them out, too. Yeah, the, yeah they're easy to spread. Yeah. Anything else, Jake? We'll be back next week. Um, is there any other content scheduling that we can talk about? We got the sale going on. Um, appreciate that. If you don't subscribe to John Boy Jake TV or John Boy Jake Radio podcast apps and you've listened to this episode this deep into the episode, I'd suggest doing that. It'd be nice. I, I guess I, the word is request, not suggest. Kindly. We'd prefer request, you Request. Yeah. Not suggest. Uh, yeah. No, thanks, everybody. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. We'll, uh, we're back on the content grind. We're doing, you know, some more of the JJR and the watching and stuff. So I know the people listening to this, you enjoy that. Share. Have fun. We, gotta, we also have fun baseball stuff coming up. That we'll be announcing soon, so keep eyes out for that. But yeah, have fun. Enjoy your Thanksgiving. Tell everyone that we say hello. Goodbye. Farewell. Alvidusan. Is that how you say it? Sure. Alvidusan. All right. See you guys. Do we have outro music? I play you, that sometimes. You play Bed of the Day, like just the sound and jake yells at that let's see classic rock loop i don't like the way they do the volume on the new laptops update that like touch bar thing yeah yeah it's been like my hesitation with getting a new one i don't like the touch bar give me a button especially for the phone there's one button that i hit all the time and now it's not there like f3 hit it all the time now it's not there i don't know how to find it if anyone knows, let me know. CCSU plus 26, people. Go Blue Devils. <laughs>